Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here. Um, and today, actually, before I introduce Jackie, I got a compadre here. Um, Jim, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jim Ford, uh, Avid Auto Hotkey user and uh, close friend of Mr. Glines here. And I visited here in Texas as we're discussing some something we think is exciting. I'm sure Joe will get into it in a few minutes. Yeah, and actually, so the other really fun thing was that um, Tank from the Auto Hockey Forum also happened to live, move really close to us. So the three of us have been in a room for the last like five days or so. And we've like, we have the most auto hockey knowledge experience that's ever been in a room together, you know, ever. But um, anyway, so, so Jackie, over to you here in Denmark. Yeah, yeah, here in Denmark, uh, all <laughs> alone, uh, nobody around me. I, I don't know anybody in real life who actually uses auto hotkey. So yeah, I of course know you and you're real, um, just a bit a you know, it, it, away from me, but yeah. It's funny, yeah, that's right. It's funny is, um, Jackie, you, I think you know, you were the first person that that I really started talking to that used auto hotkey and, and it was, um, you know, that was a while ago now, but um, it was then I started doing those interviews and that actually was some point actually it was on LinkedIn. I, I met Jim through that and then we did the interviews and stuff. But um, it's, it's, I can't tell you how fun it is to, to actually meet the people who, you know, it's, how do I say that right? You'd think it's a correlation that like, well, they happen to use the same tools. So what? Well, I, I really think the fact that we use auto hotkey, it define, it, it helps define a lot of, not define you but we have a lot of things in common, right? How we approach things. And I know you and I, that's why we bonded over the years. Is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're very similar in how we think about things and how we do things and how we're learning and trying, experimenting. And we're not, we're too lazy to go do something the manual way. So we find a, a better way to do it, right? It's, um, it's a commonality that I think every, virtually every person that I've met that uses auto hotkey, I, let, me, let me caveat that statement slightly anyone who writes anything with auto hotkey because you know, there's plenty of people I've given stuff to and they, they use it, but they don't even know it's really auto hotkey. Right. So I don't think that counts. Yeah. And, and there is something different here because I think that if you have PHP developers get together or Python developers get together, they, they like their tool, they prefer their tool, but auto hotkey people are a little fanatical. Well, but, but also I think it's more that we're, we're different in how like mm -hmm. PHP people, they don't sure. share that finding a way, a better way of doing stuff. They, they are quirky. We, we all know that, but I'm sorry. And it certainly has probably, as you're driving at, more to do with the solutions or the types of problems we're trying to solve yeah, than it enough. is the, the tool we're actually using. Yeah. But AutoVecchi is the best in what it does. Best in class, no question. So, yeah, I've, I've, I've tried to, in my mind, formulate what actually differentiates a person who uses AutoHotKey and, and someone who actually goes on to learn uh, any other type of language. And, and to me, I've, I've, each time I thought about, mm, maybe I should learn Python, adapt a little in Python, but it never really grew on me because it's much easier with the knowledge of our hotkey that I had to just write those few lines over there and have something working. And I could do it in Python as well but I wouldn't really gain anything from learning to do it in Python. So unless I had a need where other hat key would be unable to do it. And, and I've, I've really, really not found much where we, if you're, let's say a software company who wants to develop a tool who might be cloud-based or something like that, sure why not find something that's really good at doing cloud-based stuff that, that makes a lot of sense. But for me, who were already sitting at a Windows PC, a tool who works really, really well with Windows, that's the thing. Yeah, no, I, and actually, and I forget who it was. We've, we've had a lot of meetings. So as Jim mentioned, we're looking at putting together a business around basically using auto hockey and other tools. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we might use other tools, depends on the need and what we're doing, but auto hockey won't be one of the main things, but using it to make money, right? I know that's evil for a lot of people, but um, we're, we're evil capitalists apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but during one of the meetings, someone, someone was like, oh, um, oh, you could also do something like this. And he mentioned some cloud-based app stuff that you could put stuff in the, and we're like, no, that, that's not what this tool does. You know, and, and it's it's always 
a little bit of work to explain the difference. That's why I like the word desktop automation over like um, RPA, robotics process automation, right? Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's desktop automation and maybe even Windows desktop automation is very clear on what you're doing, you know, what it's on and, and what's happening versus having a robot typing, which is what RPA to me sounds like. I, um, incidentally, I was listening to a podcast the other day and this lady had written, co-authored a book on robotics process automation. And in it, she's like, oh, and such and such, why don't you stand up real quick? And uh, he stands up and he uh, goes, um, I think the guy was from Blue Prism. Um, and she says, this is the man that actually invented the term, you know, robotics process automation and how we all love it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't, you know. And what was really ironic was five minutes later, this lady in the crowd comes up and says, yeah, I'm actually, I'm a developer and I've been doing this stuff for a long time. And I have never, ever thought of this as robotics process automation. And I don't understand where the robot fits in and blah. It was really funny, honestly. That's great. Yeah. That's um, great. And they're like, well, it's kind of this, like, and she goes, no, I, you know, I do this and I don't, I don't see it. Um, in the hotkey, on a hotkey forum, we certainly talk around these types of issues, automating workplace, workforce uh, applications in one form or another. And I think that most of the people who do it now don't understand they're doing RPA. They don't even know that term. They just know I'm making people more efficient. We're, we're automating the process. Um, so there's a huge PR issue in this particular industry yeah it's quite interesting because uh, at least at the current company i have uh, and you know that joe that i saw at one point while walking through the it department in in one of our other locations that they actually had i can't remember if it was automate anywhere or if it was blue prism or whatever it was yeah. but they had it on their scrum board and i was like hmm interesting so the company has at least done something or bought some licenses or whatever they've done because they have it there i hadn't heard about anything being automated or running within that type of environment and then thinking but i've already made a lot of automation <laughs> with, from where i'm sitting so yeah it was just interesting to see that they, they, I'm not sure they were actually getting anywhere with it, but they had bought it with some kind of intent. But, um, yeah. Yeah, we, um, by the way, and we, it was ended up being a botched video, so I don't think we're going to share that video, but um, Tank was over, and, you know, he used to work implementing automation anywhere at client sites, and he would travel there and set it up. And so we said, hey, while we're all together, can you give us a, an introduction to using automation anywhere? And so he got it set up and then was trying to automate in the part that some parts were breaking and not working properly, but even we still were able to do some things and both Jim and I were like, wow, this is a pain. Um, it was so hard to take so much longer to do some simple web scraping as opposed to doing it on a hotkey and, uh, and, and take also, he's like, Oh yeah, I, I hate the tour. You know, he, he, does, he would not use it unless, you know, it's, something that like the client has already paid for is using, but um, it was very interesting to see that the amount of work we, the first thing Jim and I were looking at was like, how, how do we actually write a script to help automate, you know, the programming of automation anywhere, because it was such a pain to, to manually do. Um, Joe and I wouldn't have spent an hour clicking these boxes. It was all a bunch of dialogue boxes, click, click a drop down, go over here. When you got the thing from over here, all yeah. your data got lost. So you had to click. Keep some other things and then add that the and then settings. you had to do that over and over and yeah. over and we were all th joe and i immediately are like oh no 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 yeah yeah um but back to your your other point jackie um which i have another spreadsheet but i, I won't even click to it but i, I want to at least talk to it a bit was um tank had mentioned some of he had quantified how much money because he was a um a banking industry and he, he had saved them he had quantified how much money and do you remember what it was like 22 million or something? Yes, it was. I think it was around 22 million dollars. He saved the company. And, and if I remember right, like never once actually got a bonus, of course, because mm -hmm. who wants that? But, um, but so when, when I was working in my corporate world, um, now some of my spreadsheet a little bit was not from working at, at TI, but the vast majority of it was. And I added up, you know, by each thing and how much time it took a human to do it. And then how much time, it, um, it took the computer to do it. This doesn't take out my programming time, granted. But um, 
I added up and multiplied it and said, okay, it's done how many times per month? Okay, let's add that and I'll do it by year. And it was, and you know, granted I was there, I think, eight, let's say eight years in this job. Every year I worked, I saved, it would have taken roughly like 48 years to have done the work that I, you know, did in one year. Um, and, and that was, honestly, that was like a conservative estimate because I was trying to keep it on the low end. Um, and, and it was, like you said, it's like, I know I've done these things yet no one, and here, here's the irony, right? If, uh, if we actually propose to go over there and let's say we even use automation anywhere or blue prism or something like go to TI and they would probably, you know, pay us like 500,000 a year in licensing fees plus two grand a day to set up some stupid stuff that nothing compared to what I had done before. Um, and it's still me doing the same, you know, and actually, or ironically, I would use auto hotkey, right. And, and, and do it for less, but um, it's the same work, you know, it's, it's, it was one of those, when I worked in research, um, I was always, you know, in statistics, I, my background is in multivariate statistics. I did all the advanced stuff, but I was on the client side, which is really rare, but they would hire out and they would hire someone and bring them in and pay them like $10,000 to run regression. And I'd tell my boss, I'm like, I, I can do all this, you know? And, and like one project that he's like, well, just go ahead and do it. And then let's show them the comparison. And so I did the stuff. It took me about an hour and a half or two hours and uh, sure enough, we got exactly the same findings and the, the vendor charged $10,000. Um, and he just showed them as like, by the way, Joe did all this, you know, in a couple hours and, you know, had the same results, but just, just FYI. Nine. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, it's one of the, it really is a positioning thing and how they see you and your value, right? Of what your job role is. It's sad, but true. Similar. Tank talked about the first proposal he had at BOA to automate part of their call center they went out and got an outside proposal for 9 million. And he eventually ended up doing it for 40,000, you know, cost as employee. <coughs> and they saved three quarters of a million every year. Uh, Tank didn't get either the 9 million or the three quarter of a million. Well, or the recognition, I think. Yeah, right. right. May have gotten a little plaque. May have gotten a little plaque, okay. That's what we work for, isn't it, Jackie? <laughs> I don't know if it is, but yeah, yeah. I, the first year, the year where I actually learned Auto Hot Key, I was um, hired in to help on a project on a large hospital nearby where they were um, marking all of the rooms with numbers. And the problem was the people they have hired in couldn't read a blueprint. So they were putting these numbers uh, on the wrong rooms. So to kind of make sure that wouldn't happen, they were kind of looking for someone who could read drawings and I was looking for something to do and I got that job and that was fine and it was easy going around. I, I heard music all day and it was quite easy and slowly it became I should also be typing in this information instead of delivering it on uh, different types of paper and I got that and after having done that for maybe a few weeks I was like and then I'm on this window and then I'm on that window and then I copy this value from there to there. I must be able to copy more values at once. That should be doable. And within that first year, I had made the, the thing that, that Joe, you talked about. I had a spreadsheet who showed, that showed all of what I've actually automated for them, how much a lot of the technicians were actually saving by using my programs instead of sitting at the computer at length. And I was saving the hospital more money than it would cost to keep me on. But I, again, I had a limited um, um, hiring. So I was only supposed to be there for two years. And I took this piece of paper and took it to the person who should extend my stay. Um, but yeah, even though they actually looked at the numbers, it wasn't enough. Yeah. But it's a good story. Have you actually suggested to your viewers that they do this kind of, of yep. thing? Document what you think your automations are doing. Yeah, you know, actually. Um, and, and you can be conservative, extremely conservative. Yeah. You should be, because the numbers are still going to be 40,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, 
we've talked about it, but I, I think which as simple as it sounds, it might be good to walk through exactly what we're talking about and how you might do it and whether you should stick to it by the hours or by dollars, right? Because I could have taken the average person at TI that I was, you know, what, here's the, here's one of the rule of thumbs, whatever the salary is of the person doing the work, if you double it, that's what it costs the company to have the employee, right? So, yeah. so if you are going to take the, the money you're saving, make sure you, if you're guessing how much they make, you know, double it. The, the, the people that I was doing stuff for, they were making minimum, I'd say 65,000, probably more. So that's 130,000 a year. It's costing the company. Now, if I multiply that times the number of hours I'm saving, right, it's an insane number. Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't making that much. It was close to it. I'm kidding. But. And just to be clear with everyone, what we mean is the insurance, the other benefits, yeah, taxes, the, uh, yeah. in, insurance, Workman's and uh, uh, even uh, your cubicle, your, your, yeah, your space, space your room, office. Space. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Even if it's the size of a postage stamp, it's still cost. Yeah, the your retirement. And, I mean, there's so many things. That's why it, it, it as a rule of thumb, just doubling it is close. I don't. I don't think that number is is wrong in any way because it, it's exactly the same in Denmark. And and I've at least seen a few times what my hours are sold for, and and that's maybe five times what I'm actually paid an hour. So. So yeah, the company to, to kind of cover its own costs of actually having an employee and maybe also banking a little bit of money. Right. Yeah. yeah. One would hope. Right. Yeah, exactly. So you, know, you, you see your bill rate, Jackie, and you begin to cry. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one way to put it. That's for which, sure. Which, which is part of just incidentally, that's why I think for, I know for me and I think somewhat for Jim and, and maybe for Tank as well, as you know, when you, when you develop experience over years and years, you realize you're worth a lot more than what a company will pay you for. And that even if you bill out at nothing close to what they're billing you out for, you can end up with more money in your pocket, right? As long as you can get references and get the work. Yeah. yeah. I'm at the moment. I'm so lucky that, that I'm, I'm also selling an Arhat key product, right? And yep. I'm Evil. making, Evil, yeah. And <coughs> that product is currently making about the same as I get from my company before taxes. That's awesome. Uh, but if I dropped my full-time job and went with my own, if I didn't double that, it wouldn't be able to cover the exact same things because outside of what I'm actually paid, I also have paid leave. Sure. parental leave, sick days, uh, pension, all that stuff. It, it just accumulates. So even though those two at the moment are kind of similar, um, I'm still a ways off from actually being able to. No, there are many people in America who are working only for the insurance. Yeah. Yeah, that's a huge one. But if you are wanting to feel valuable, I'll give you one small tip, which I learned from my friends. Uh, putting auto hotkey on your LinkedIn profile may get something, some interest from people. But if you put RPA, that will get interest from recruiters and your phone will begin to ring. Hmm. And it's good advice to actually know terms like that, right? Because I've at least seen quite a few people who've stuck with auto hotkey for some period and ask how how do I land a job with this knowledge of our hot key that I have? Yeah. And yeah, it, it's that's that's always a good advice. To I, I, sadly, I think the answer is you don't, <laughs> right? You you land a job because you have the skills and you go to um, a vendor that is pushing automation anywhere or a blue prism or whatever and say I have the skill set for doing, you know, for analyzing processes and knowing what can be automated and implementing. And, and from what Tank was saying, they'll, they'll pay to train you and hire you at a six figure income like, like that because the demand is so high right now. Tank's story was perfect. He's, he had people calling him from uh, a large management consulting agency saying, we need you for RPA. And he said, RPA, I don't do RPA. And they had to say, yes, you do. Which is the same thing we want to say to the auto hotkey users out there who are doing this. You may not think you do RPA, but yes, you probably let's, did. Let's actually let's back up because I was there at this. They kept calling him and he kept hanging up on them 
over and over and over until finally some lady he's like all right, i guess i'll just talk to her and they're like oh we want to rp he's like yeah and then he's like oh, i don't do that and then when she started explaining what it was that they considered rpa then he was like oh yeah, yeah i do that yeah. i do that a lot yeah that's pretty good and by the way for anybody who knows tank from the forums he is almost more impressive in person than he is as being you know our fearless leader of the the auto hotkey forum and ahk org and auto hotkey org and uh, amazing amazing guy yeah he's very smart we've had, we've had a lot of fun hanging out and I'm sure that he'll be on one of these podcasts at some point. No, I'm not invited. Oh, okay. We'll we'll move him out of the room by then. Um, <coughs> at some point, we, you know, we do these at a certain time. But anyway, yeah, I'm obviously, if we can get him, um, sure. he, yeah, he's very funny. Uh, but he and he only hung up, hung up on us for three or four months, right. so we were lucky. But... We we've enjoyed. We've been talking about. We've had a lot of fun chatting. And um, I it's it's one of those things. I highly encourage anybody checking this out is you know, either form a meetup or do whatever you can to find other people that, that whether they work in auto hockey <clears throat> or automation anywhere or whatever it is, there's, you have a lot in common with the other people and you'll find you're very like-minded and it's, it's just fun. And then you can trade war stories of, you know, how many people don't value what you do or, or you try to teach them and then they go, wow, it's amazing. And then they never you know, bother to learn. Um, but if you're really good at auto hotkey and you get a job doing automation anywhere, you'll see immediately that, Auto Hotkey is the number one tool for automating automation anywhere development. That's yeah. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Autom okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually, I was talking to Maestri with earlier today, and uh, I told him Tank gave us a, a walkthrough of it. He's like, "Oh well," and I said, "Well, let me see if I can pull it up." And I I couldn't get to the exact same windows that that Tank did, but I was saying, "I'm like one of my my first things I'm gonna do is hire you to help help work with me to build a script to help automate automation anywhere because." <laughs> It was it was just painful. It was brutal. It, it really, yeah. Truly brutal. When you're, you're not used to using now. Now, having said that, I can definitely see how I could say I could have some kid off the street come in and in two weeks teach him the bare bones of doing a lot of the stuff. Right. I, I will admit to that. Whereas an auto hockey, it'd probably take two months because there's a lot more things you're expected to know off the top of your head. But the um the dragging of these GUIs as as Jim was explaining, like it was just really when you're when you know what you're doing, it's really painful. It's restrictive. But their target market is hopefully people doing it themselves. It's not the the engineers. And so from that standpoint, they probably have done a good job of making a, a pretty robust tool that can be automated by someone with less background. But as we will have probably talked and we'll talk again, the actual technology here is sometimes second to getting the analysis right, sometimes, usually. Um, and that's still a, a process you can't ignore regardless of what tool you use. I've been uh, reading a book on RPA and it's actually, it's a really good book, which I was surprised, but it, it talks a lot about it. Well, one of the things that from talking to Tank and from Jim as well is uh, the most critical part isn't the software you're using, it's the skill of the person that is doing the automation is what is critical. Um, and, and that's where it gets back to is like, having someone walk in off the street and say, I'm gonna automate this process that doesn't understand all that, doesn't ask the right questions at the beginning. And that's where um, we were talking to someone and, and they, they, before he came in, they had got um, automation anywhere and spent like a, almost a year with nothing being developed. And then within like a month of this person coming on, they had several coming out the door because this person has a process and, and can crank things out and knows what they're doing. Whereas if you don't know what you're doing, you, you don't even know what, well, actually one of the other things I got in that book it mentioned was really, really critical was, hey, before you automate a process, make sure that process is stable and repeatable and actually is the right way to do it, right? Um, so take a step back. And I know, Jackie, we've talked about that kind of stuff for years of what was the talk about the example you had with the, the OS, I think it was. Yeah, the I, I, I had that right on on, uh, on my mind. Exactly. Because I just talked about it the other day. Right. And the thing was, our company, they get mm, what should I call it? Um, used electronics numbers. Uh, how much this this location use um, in electricity, 
that comes into our economics uh, division. They receive it on a PDF because, of course, the company is sending it, don't want it to be changed. But that's an editable PDF. You can mark the text and stuff. But <laughs> there are three people who need to look at it. So someone prints it out, gives it to these three people. They then take these markers and mark which ones are theirs. This, these are my area. Then they give it back to the person who actually scans them in with the colors, sits there, makes a new PDF from the scanned ones and sends the new still editable PDF to another one who repeats the process of actually printing out the PDF and delivering it to someone. And one of those are the director of, of our area. And one of my colleagues, he actually double checks uh, what he gets. So he takes this copied PDF, scans it in and sends it on an email to my colleague, which then takes the <coughs> numbers on the list and he has to type it into the system that the first company that sent it to us actually has to check if these are live using it, it's again it's it's um things that use electricity right and and if it's something that is ours we can check it in their system and he couldn't actually copy out the text because, hey, it was scanned in. So he was sitting there and typing these, I, I think there were 28 uh, numbers, each, each of them. And I was like, what are you doing? Because he was, he was standing there on hours on end, just typing these numbers. Like, you do know you can use OCR to, to copy something from an image. No, he didn't know that. So, so I showed him a tool that could do that. And he was quite happy. And uh, the day after he, he came over to me and said, oh, that, that's a great help and stuff like that. I was like, mm, why are you actually doing yeah. that? And he explained why he was doing it. And I was like, mm, so we receive it from the companies which page you're typing it into. Don't we receive it in something where we could just copy it and check it? It's like, mm, I don't really know. And then he made the backstepping to actually figure out all of what I just said. Yeah. So, so yeah, the first PDF could have been used all the way and he could have gotten something that he could have just copy pasted from. Just That's insane. Even simpler, yeah. Yeah, that is wild. But it shows what can happen if you ask the right questions or what yeah. could happen if you don't ask the right questions. Exactly. It's a very simple process. There's four steps involved. And on the, uh, at one of those steps, someone takes a decision of actually making a hard copy of something that's digital. And then all of the benefits of having it digital actually falls away. It's just, yeah. It's interesting that something like that can actually be caught and stopped if if you just, yeah. No, that is a great story. And I will be telling that the rest of my life. I, I, I can't imagine how many errors would have had, and just rechecking and checking, you know, because something got mixed up. That, that yeah, just exactly. And he was manually typing them, right? And that was the big thing because if he typed one of the digits wrong, it would come back with it not existing. And, and then he had to retype all of them, of course. And, but the only thing he was actually doing was to check that they had them in the system with our company name on them. So, and the company had actually taken all of those with our company name on them and sent them to us. So it was, it was, I know they are still doing something with it, but it's kind of redundant to my ear. Uh, but again, yeah, sure. If someone says pay us for all of these, it's fair enough that we actually check that all of these are ours. Sure. Right. But yeah. And it goes to show again, as we see over and over and over again, RPA or automation processes come in to save money or save time or uh, in some way reduce costs. 
And the reality is that every time when you walk away later on, what was the big benefit? Error reduction mm -hmm. shows up as number one. Others come along, but you see yeah. why. So one, one <laughs> case analysis in that book I was reading, it was for a cell phone company. And this was, this was a while ago, but it was in Europe. And uh, it, took, it took, I think, like two or three days for the phones to get activated you know, without the RPA. And so they wanted to save money and time on the whole process. But what they found, they ended up having an 80% reduction in phone calls in because of people wondering if they're, when their phone was going to get active, because it was done so much faster. They got it down, I think like 20 minutes or something, right? After instead of three days. And, uh, but the loss and volume of calls coming in just because it was done so quick, they, it was a total unexpected benefit yet. That was just to them, they were like, holy cow. And there's, of course, there are other huge benefits as well. Almost every RP, if RPA project of any size has an unexpected benefit, which is in a normal project, that's a weird story and very interesting and you tell it. In RPA, it's, you can almost ask, well, what was your unexpected benefit? Yeah, 80% of our cars calls went away because people weren't complaining about the problem anymore. Fascinating stuff. It is, and, and I as well, a company like ours where a lot of uh, emails and maybe complaints and stuff like that actually come in, and to me, you could quite, a, uh, quite easily build uh, simple filters on these um, shared uh, inboxes to make sure that this stuff was actually uh, distributed, but instead you have people actually reading it, and of course, some cases that makes sense, but with the right combination of words, there's, you can almost be certain that people uh, need to go to specific places with these um, complaints. And, and we have the same thing with uh, people calling in to our call centers. And as soon as they call in, the person in the other end needs to figure out what the specific um, utility they're having issues with is, so they can reconnect them to someone who has uh, knowledge about that. And we, in, we are in central heating. We get a lot of wrong um, uh, complaints or people who need help uh, directed at us. And the thing is, if the person who takes the phone, one of the first questions they could ask them is what is your postal code? Because our company actually covers quite a lot amount, a large amount of postal codes, but we only deliver central heating in a specific number of them. So if you knew that, you would know if it could be water, if it could be sewage, if it could be heating, if it could be gas. So that simple thing, that four digit code or whatever postal code sizes are, that would have helped immensely, but they are still not doing it, even though it's been raised, but yeah. Yeah, that's, that's um, understanding you know, intelligently going back and, and walking through that process is critical, right? It can, you can think through, I mean, screeners and survey research, right? We do the same thing of, of ordering the questions in the way that's most likely to drop out a non, you know, person that's not qualified, right? Of that first one of like, well, we're, we're you know, we have a survey going to women, uh, only women. And should we put the question about gender last or first, right? I mean, and honestly, I've seen stuff where it's not the first thing and you're like, what? why would you, you know, wait? Um, why would you not ask a question or they ask it later? It's just, it's insane, but yeah, it happens. Yeah, and I, I have like, um, if you just automated it, with, we have, uh, you must know this, that when you call something, they might ask you for your, I don't know, social security number yeah. or something, if right. it's the bank or something like that. And why not start with actually saying- Enter your zip code, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Right, you could do it entire machine, yeah, clearing out, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, looking at processes, seeing where, where it can be automated, that, that's a great skill, um, yeah. Cool, well, um, I think we, I gotta get Jim to the airport here pretty soon, so. Um, Fair enough. It's been a fun call, and uh, 
we'll uh, talk to you next week, I guess. Mm -hmm. or I will. Absolutely. Good. Thank you for having me. You bet, man. Appreciate it, Jackie. Yeah. It's always good to talk to you. Absolutely. Great seeing you. All right. Um, All right, buddy. Yeah. Later. Bye.